Your Excellencies, uh, members of the Diplomatic Corps, ladies and gentlemen, this indeed is a historic occasion for us in Ireland and for Anthashka, the National Trust for Ireland. Anthashka in the Irish language means, the, wor the word means the treasury, the place of safekeeping, and indeed was the word used by the Irish kingship for the regalia of their office to, for safekeeping. So it is the name of the organisation in Irish. We've been involved in the ICNT and in two since the start in the early 70s. And in 2003, we were one of the signatories of the Edinburgh Declaration. And at the end of this, our 60th anniversary year, we're particularly honoured to be hosting the 13th International Conference. India in INTEC, uh, of which I'm the chairman, we took the initiative of organising an Asian regional conference to create a mutual cooperation in certain areas. It is an enormous pleasure for me to welcome you, Minister, here at the 13th International Conference of National Trusts. Some 36 years ago, an informal gathering of the then National Trusts of the World gathered under the auspices of the National Trusts of Scotland. And that started what has become one of the most important means by which the knowledge and experience of the National Trusts of the World can be exchanged. And is very positive for the worldwide advocacy of heritage and environmental issues. This week's conference may not find a solution to every climate change challenge that faces our built and natural heritage, but I have no doubt that it will inform and advance the debate on the significant issues facing all that is shared uh, amongst us, uh, and it is our birthright as citizens uh, of this planet. When we're talking about the whole question of debt, I think people in this room know that for far too long we have been living beyond our ecological means uh, and that we have been storing up an ecological debt for future generations. I'm I delighted think. to have the opportunity to appeal to you all to do your very best to conserve our natural resources. If not for your sake, then for the sake of the young people of this world, that I plead with you to spread the word among your friends, colleagues, communities and countries. Excess carbon dioxide and methane gases from our lifestyles, do not allow enough of the sun's heat back from the earth into the atmosphere, causing a catastrophic increase in temperature. This rise in temperature is melting the polar ice caps, spreading deserts, and flooding many other areas. This is your legacy, damaging the world for my generation. It is your duty to put an end to climate change, your duty cut carbon. In fact, I had an opportunity several years ago uh, to speak to the National Trust and the thing I urged them to do was to link more with young people. And the proof of why that's a good idea uh, was given this morning uh, by Eamon Hayes because what he talked about is what we don't talk about enough when we address issues of climate change and that is the need for behavioural change that we all have to change our habits and our behaviour. A campaign by Antashka, in collaboration with all of the sister organisations uh, gathered here at this international conference, could lead the way for national trusts worldwide to get involved in the necessary fight against global warming. And it would harness the public imagination to appreciate protected structures and the role of our historic properties while enabling our various trusts to lead the way in a unique area. What do you think about the importance of this conference? It is very meaningful. As you know, Taiwan is an island too. So we are very concerned about the uh, climate change. Actually, it's on our, our uh, government's pri preliminary list to uh, develop the uh, green energy, also the uh, environmental concern. Okay. So that's why we have a delegation from Taiwan come here to join us. And I wish this conference very successful. Yeni, Thank you. what is the most important issue facing your organization? Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, public awareness, actually, because uh, in most uh, cases of the uh, natural disasters, post-natural disasters, I think uh, uh, the humanitarian issue is the most important rather than the cultural 
issues like heritage, something like that. Okay, and where are you from, Yeni? Aceh, Indonesia. Indonesia, mm -hmm. and because of your experience with the tsunami. Mm -hmm. Yes. All do hope the Declaration Dublin here can be endorsed to the Copenhagen uh, meeting that all of the world's uh, stakeholders can uh, attention for the green heritage and environment for the future. Thank you. Thank you. I think the most important thing for this conference is to send a message to the negotiating teams in Copenhagen that uh, the whole international trusts operation around the world, comprising at least five million people and probably many more, uh, all are talking with a united voice here which says, seal the deal in Copenhagen. Uh, that's, the, that's the important message. My name is Elisabeth Seip and I'm a delegate from Norway, from Fortidsminneforeningen, which happens to be the oldest uh, trust organization in Europe and then probably in the world and we are of course much concerned with the themes of this conference because climate involves everyone and also even if Norway are maybe at the moment well situated we, we have to think of the future. The combined world voice about heritage, be it cultural and natural, expressing a view that the time has passed for governments to act in a united fashion. If we don't act now, it will be far more difficult, more costly, and most probably far more disastrously if we do have to wait to the future. Today is the time to act, and with the global body communicating as they are through the Dublin Declaration, it's a demonstrative, tangible, effort being made by the heritage movement to get the world's leaders to wake up and act.